Welcome to the Escape Pod. I'm Josiah. I'm Nathan. And we are doing a review of Tenet, which is the first movie we have seen in theaters since February. It feels good. Oh, yeah. I meant to look that up. Oh, because I think it was Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm already going to fuck this immediately. I'm no, it's fine. Phone. The best movie of the year. <laughs> Until now, maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I'm sure you're I, right. I, I love how the two like competing best films of the year are a Chris Nolan film and Sonic the Hedgehog. That what a bizarre reality I live in. What a time to be alive. That's insane. But to be fair, they're both you know really good. Uh, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog. So that was February fourteenth. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking so. Oh. <laughs> the last film I saw in theaters was I Still Believe. <laughs> that, pr- that premium Christian depression. That's, that's right. That's right continue on that trend of adapting uh christian rock artists into biopics yeah which has yielded quite a bit of success actually it is it's actually the turnaround also there's a movie called corona zombies i'm Uh, sure that's gonna be great it came out i know but i haven't seen it's an hour i would happily watch that i'm sure it's completely sensitive i i certainly hope so it came out April 10th of this oh, year. So. Very nice. Yeah. But anyway, talking about... Yeah, Tetna, the first film we have seen in theaters since February, and it is uh, late October now. Yeah. Tenet being probably the only film that has actually not been delayed <laughs> somehow. I don't know why. How weird is it that that's like a normal gap for some people? You know? Like, yeah. Because we go to the movies fucking all the time. Cause, I don't know. I feel uh, like the average Joe will go to the movies like maybe once every month or two. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an easy way to entertain the family. That's true. That's People true. go to a, Avengers movies. <laughs> that's true. And that's at least two a year. Oh no, we're averaging three. Yeah, uh, well, not anymore. Well, thank Christ. Thank God. No, there's gonna be like six next year, and they're gonna burn themselves out, as many are predicting. They're not going to a good place. But on the other side of the pond, so Tenet, Chris Nolan's latest effort. Uh, what did you kind of expect going into this? Because I, because we got the trailers for this. I don't remember exactly when, but obviously I heard about this way back when it got first announced, like pre-production. They're like, oh, yeah. all it said was Chris Nolan's doing some kind of thing about like a spy thriller called Tenet. Yeah, I, I think, I think they first started talking about this around Dunkirk. Yeah, like it was once, it, once the Dunkirk trailers were out. And I, you know, like you do, I, I was just checking Chris Nolan's Wikipedia every now and then, and then it's like, oh, there's there's some untitled movie coming yeah. on, and it's like, oh, it's going to be a sci-fi, and he's like, oh, it's going to be, like, kind of Bond-esque, and it's like, okay, something about stopping World War III, it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, they, that was the thing they said, stopping World War III, which is not, in fact, the plot of the movie. Yeah, that plot point gets brought, I guess the scientist lady is just no, wrong. No, no, yeah, because, like, the movie tries to trick you into thinking which I always knew what the plot was because I'm like the only reason they'd be doing this is not for World War Three, but I mean I guess you could say like maybe it's to get an advantage over the enemy but to me it was always the interstellar plot point of well they're fucked so they gotta take care of it yeah because this this movie is like this weird combination of Inception Interstellar and The Dark Knight Rises yeah with uh with some of the, the and James Bond <laughs> and James Bond and some of the followings artistic decision to be vague and you know <laughs> the the first thing I want to say before we go any deeper is that I feel like this movie is what people who weren't paying attention to Inception thought Inception was. Where yeah. People were like, oh, Inception, it's so complicated. And it's like, not really. If you pay attention, they pretty much tell you everything that's going on. Yeah. Whereas in Tenet, I feel like it's like, no, it's like it's like a cacophony of, I didn't even know. I feel like Tenet is almost like the climax to like a four season television show where it's like, yeah, like, <laughs> oh, and in that season we talked about how you can heal people through inversion by taking them back and so the wound, and it's like, and it's just one dropped line, and then it's like, no, but it's like a whole plot point. And so there, there is elements of Tenet where it feels like there's like a huge universe behind this that I'm never going to see. Yeah. You know, it, like it, Tenet 2 is out there somewhere. <laughs> 
So I just wanted to say that, like, this movie is very complicated. It is very complicated, and it's and it's not helped by the fact that Chris Nolan really doesn't want you to hear what characters are no. saying in the it, beginning. It, no, no, see, like, people have said that about, like... I think it kind of started with Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. And then Dunkirk, I think, had a little bit of that, but a overall bit. it was kind of just guys shouting what, during war while explosions were going off. So I was like, oh, they're saying, like, head this way. And, yeah. But this is this movie, it's like, no, they're like, there's complex, like, uh, machinations going on and, like, directions and, and, and people. And backwards speak that is being translated. Backwards, so forward Twin speak. Peaks yeah. backwards speak that is being translated. And then uh, he gets it. All this shit. And it's like. And, and I think we'll get to that when we get to that, but I think that was the scene where I was like, okay, th this, I cannot understand this without a second watch through. Yeah. Like, I, I understand, but there's, like, details that I just, just go past me because, like, and something is reversed. I don't know. That's kind of why, that's kind of why I love watching Nolan films, though, especially yeah. those first few times, because I like to think that I'm very observant when, when watching movies. Yeah. Like, it's pretty, I feel like it's pretty easy to sort of keep track of the plot points that are introduced and like you know a scene or two at least before the reveal i'll be like oh yeah that's what it is yeah and i feel like nolan kind of stretches that muscle a little bit because i because i really yeah. you really try to clamp down way harder on all of the details I, I, um, I, I remember that feeling with dunkirk when i realized how the timeline works because as you're watching dunkirk you're like Okay, then there's like a ship that's sinking, and you don't put it together. That's the mm -hmm. ship from the earlier scene mm -hmm. because all the three time periods are not simultaneous. They're like hours, day, like days a week. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay, and like the moment when you realize it when Cillian Murphy pops up, and then you're like, wait, what? Oh God! So uh. Tenet was like that, but like half the movie <laughs> mm -hmm. where it was like oh okay that's why the car was honking at them it's because 10 minutes from now that's robert pattinson yeah and um because in the moment you're like why is that car honking at them it doesn't make any sense and then it's like i think um i think a lot of what it is because so spoilers obviously from the movie um, yeah but you know there's bits where you know, people are moving around backwards and up and attacking them, and they're very, yeah. like, their faces are covered, you can't see very well, and it's like, right. waltz them in the future, <laughs> duh. Well, um, oh, I didn't I didn't get it with that, with that, and uh, that initial fight. It was, it was once, once I kind of realized that was possible, then I was like, oh, that's why that they, they focus so much on that one fight, it wasn't just a set piece. It yeah. Was, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So, so I saw that coming. But the way it was handled made it still... It, it almost Trippy. retroactively made it harder to follow because yeah. my thought is, okay, yeah. it's them from the future, so they know exactly what to do, and they're just sort of, like, going through emotions, whereas, like, no, it's still very frantic, and, like, do you remember what you did, like, 20 minutes ago? Yeah. yeah. You gotta kind of piece it together as it's coming at you backwards, and it's like, fuck! That's like... Yeah, I, think, I, I will say this movie, uh, maybe not for some people, because they'll probably just be either tripped out or entertained, but this movie does have, like, a weird cosmic horror element to it absolutely it does where like it almost functions in terms like i'm watching this and i'm like no this backwards fighting scene is actually really horrifying the bit when he's crawling like when, towards him on, like when he like, crawls towards him or like when he runs up the wall behind him and is grabbing yeah. him it, it 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 and this is a weird kind of off topic thing but because uh you and i'll bring up the the doctor who thing later mm. um honestly like tenet is what i wanted when people talked about the time war this is what i wanted to see where it's actually like bending your mind in terms of how time is utilized not just yeah oh they're just shooting the guys in the air and this it's like no the this group's going forwards this group's going backwards and this group going backward in the present future and it's like okay yeah that cut back and forth between blue and red team is like oh shit <laughs> yeah um, it's like oh we blew up the bottom of the building so that way it would collapse so then they would blow up the top to reassemble it what yeah it, it's it's a lot it's a lot to yeah. handle i think uh one of the the nice things that i really liked in the the um, backwards fight where it's uh, what, John, John David, David Washington. Washington. Yeah, but when he has, and we can call him that because I'm not calling him what they actually call him. Yeah, <laughs> worst part of the movie. Um, yeah. One of the things that a, a little a little thing that I felt was pretty subtle um, when he is you know going backwards and he f is fighting past self. Right, he, he starts off really like 
frantic and like character yeah the first go around yeah can because um, yeah i'll be curious to see if watching it a second time i'll see he has future self starting off more effective and then getting worse because I, yeah. I think you can see that, but the first time you watch it, by the time your brain adjusts to yeah. it, it's to the point where he's not doing as well. So yeah. Like, they also do an interesting thing where that's the only time John David Washington fights someone for, like, an extended period of time. And so you're immediately like, well, wait a minute. He's like James Bond. He can kick anyone's ass. And it's like, ah, it's because it's him. And I was like, oh, okay. I, that That's yeah. that a nice bit of retroactive kind of mm -hmm. making it so it's like it's not just, oh, there's a random mook who's really good. Yeah, because him you know? fucking up those three Russian thugs was yeah. incredible. Yeah. Like, John David Washington has, like, bulked the fuck up for this movie. And yeah. It was very scary. I, we will look, watch your career with great, great interest. interest. Yeah, no, I do, I do feel... I, I I know everyone's gonna compare this but i do feel like this is chris nolan going you know they're not gonna let me make james bond i'm just gonna make my own spy movie I'm yeah john david washington they, they were people were talking about if they're gonna make james bond black i just did yeah you know, like <laughs> exactly. he's, he's just the ultimate spy like he just gets sent in and he's like really great at everything pretty much yeah and and not to i mean that's not to discredit john david washington he gives a really good like subtle performance here where he doesn't really have a whole lot of wants and desires, but the performance is good enough where I'm like, no, I feel his earnestness to save the world. Yeah, I think I think once we get more of the sci-fi stuff, uh, his character stuff kind of takes a backseat. Because you oh, have yeah. that, that opening bit where it's yeah. like, ah, oh, you would have killed yourself rather than betray, and now you're doing this thing, and he's like, oh, I resign. You know, we get like a glimpse of kind of what his like motivation is and, and all of that. I mean, honestly, his character doesn't really have an arc per se it's it's no. it's, it's it, his arc is just realizing that he has responsibilities in the future and that yeah. he he can't be the guy to let himself die he has to plan it out yeah because I, he's planned everything out yeah I, it's it's him you know kind of switching his role from being taught and instructed and told what he has to do to now knowing it and telling others like this is what you have to do yeah da, 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 da. yeah and and again like the the thing that I compare this to is, like, kind of a James Bond, where really the plot is just, okay, this thing leads you to this thing, leads you to this thing, leads to the bad guy. Yeah. And it's like, does, do two of those steps not really matter overall? Not really. It's just kind of like to get you to the set pieces and, exactly. and get you to have, like, a little bit more... Because this film is exactly two and a half hours, but I will say that the pacing is pretty remarkable for that because... There's very few parts where it drags, but consequently that adds to the cacophony of, like, confusion because... You don't have any downtime to process what you just watched. Yeah. Whenever there is downtime, it's like, oh, hey, well, let's throw another time concept at you that is really crazy and you have to process. And it's like, okay, by the time I've done that, the scene's moving again. And Yeah. Yeah, again, like, uh, I know people have... We, we mentioned this. I know people have said it... Uh, but yeah, this movie especially is the opening five minutes is just a cacophony where it's like you don't I don't really know what anyone's saying. I need to see, <laughs> yeah. I, I need subtitles. I need subtitles hardcore. Yeah, because it's like ah, uh, and I feel like he's I feel like Nolan does that, and I know he mentioned this in Dark Knight Rises, but he intentionally was like no, like Bane's method of talking is gonna make you pay far closer attention. I'm like okay, like that's fair, but this time it really did feel like no, I'm purposely going out of my way to make sure you have to watch this a second time yeah like there's no way you can watch this the first time and totally get it yeah and it's like you know that 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 that's fine but yes i i will be watching this on dvd and going okay what what, what are they saying yeah I, I i don't know if i'll see it again in theaters yeah because i think i think the real where i'm really going to get more out of it is when i can have subtitles yeah yeah, uh, this film is, is uh, you know, it shouldn't have to be said, but it's absolutely gorgeous. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, there's those people who go, well, it's not all practical. It's like, yes, but the majority of it is, whereas yeah. the majority of Avengers Endgame is not practical effects. No. So, you no, know. That's it's, a lot of green. Yeah, so, you know, the ratio-wise, like, he, he is finding ways to present this in, in very creative ways. So, I don't want to, like, over-dramatize dra it, but, you know, if you're feeling safe, go see it. Because, I mean, we went there, there was, like, six people in the theater. Yeah. Very, Two of which you know. left at, like, the hour mark. But then one person came in at, like, two hours in, and there was 30 minutes left. And I was like, why did you uh. come in here, like, right at the end of the movie? <laughs> or they might have been there at the start and then left for, like, an hour and a half and then came back. So maybe, maybe they were like, I just want to see the beginning and ending of Tenet. Yeah. 
Don't see New Mutants. Uh, no, fuck no. I'm not seeing that in theaters. Uh, no. Pirate Bay, here we come. As far as the plot goes, I mean, I mentioned it right before recording. The guy who, like, recruits John David Washington, he has one scene. Yeah. He just gives him the the word and the, the hand sign. And he's never seen again. And I know that's the point, but, like... Yeah, see, he's I, never seen again, and Michael Caine has just one scene, and then he's gone. Yeah. Which, to be fair, in Inception, he's not a huge role, but... He's bigger than that. He's bigger than that, you know? See, I thought what we were gonna get is... Okay, you know, we've divided up information so not everyone knows everything. Um, yeah. So, John David Washington's first thing is like, Ah, oh, Tenet, it open, opens doors, but also opens wrong ones. So I thought he was gonna, like learn more code words that take him to different yes. parts of society. You know what that remind you know what this fucking reminded me of and I and and what's ironic is that this is not favorable to tenant mm. ir- ironically is that this reminded me so much the marketing of this reminded me of Skyfall where before Skyfall they were like doing the word association test and and then then they're just like Skyfall and then Bond freezes up, and it's like, ooh, what does that mean? Like, what relevance does that have to James Bond? Yeah. And then you get to the actual Skyfall movie, and it's like, you're going through, and you're like, okay, they, like, said that, and it doesn't, like, add up to anything. And then at the end, you're like, oh, that's his, that's where he grew up. Oh, okay, so that's why he, like, froze up. So it's like, I thought it was something different, but it still, like, pays off. Whereas Tenet's like, oh, what, did, what does Tenet mean? It, it doesn't mean anything. It's, 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 yeah. it's just like, what is... I mean, I guess it has to do with what are the tenets of your beliefs. Yeah. Which is what the theme of the movie kind of is. Is like, do you yeah. believe that the universe functions this way? Yeah. And then Kenneth Branagh's thing is that he kind of loses belief in everything. Mm. And that's why he's nihilistic. So yeah. I get the the title works in that way, but as its plot function, it, it's meaningless. Yeah, you know? I was expecting... Could have been any word. I, I was expecting... And granted... <sighs> Like this does this does start off as like mystery spy thriller, yeah, at, and then it leans way more hardcore into the sci-fi element, um, yeah. But I thought I thought in the build-up before we started going to reverse things, I thought it was gonna be kind of like almost like a spy thriller version of Eyes Wide Shut. Where it's just because he because <laughs> yeah. he doesn't exist. He's yeah. above government, and he's getting access to all of these places that you need to know very specific information to get. And it's like, oh well, now he's now he's talking with Michael Caine, and he has to like mix it up with billionaires and stuff. So we're gonna yeah. see like crazy shit that you know the the high class or high, right. High, and it's like no, um, yeah. Um, and this this employs the same kind of tactic as Interstellar, where they're like some future force wants to do something whereas in that film it's they want to save us and in this film they want us dead yeah but it is kind of like you know i i get it like there's no real way for us to confront them because inversion only goes backwards but i thought that maybe like the guy at the beginning was going to be from the future and i guess robert pattinson is yeah but it's but it's like it's definitely like um the 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 film tells you very early on the scientist lady who doesn't come back either yeah um she's just like yeah don't think about it and i'm like i'm like nolan i get it like i know you're gonna just use this as an excuse to do crazy shit and i can give that to you because it's the beginning of the movie and you're setting up the rules so if you tell me not to think about it i'm not gonna try to think about it too hard but then he just goes out of his way to like mind fuck you yeah. And introduce new concepts that, I mean, I just would have ignored. That scene where they talk about how if too much inversion happens, then that becomes the normal. And, like, eventually we'll just yeah. be swept away by the future. That's horrific. Yeah. That's, that's a lot to process. Yeah, no, there was a lot of points where I'm like, okay, like, then you bring up Grandfather Paradox and alternate timelines. And at first when they bring up Grandfather Paradox, I'm like... Okay, so that's, like, the main thrust now is that we're going to either cause or prevent a grandfather paradox. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, but also, what if alternate timelines? Because I'm like, okay, that's, that's fine. It's like, yeah, but what if inversion happens until it's the only thing? And it's like, okay, okay, okay yeah, I, I understand. And and again, it's not bad. I would say that, like, it's just, just this movie's just packed with with tons of ideas. Yeah, I think, I think it's uh. just that they are building quicker than the foundation can set in. So <laughs> yeah. it's like, what if this concept, and it's like, all right, I kind of get... Okay, building off of that, what about the... And it's like, okay, yeah. I'm still not sure if your foundation... It, it was right. that line where they're like, oh, can we use inversion to like re- reverse her wound? And it's like... This is just being introduced, and it's one line, and then we're instantly committing to this action. Yeah. 
And I'm like, I feel like this should have been set up at the beginning of the movie because it's like, I mean, they kind of make reference to all the things and theoretically it's possible given the rules, but it's like, this is like such a, it, it forms like such a big part of the third act that it's yeah. like, uh, just one drop it, line and then it's going and I'm like, okay. Yeah, right. and granted, so I got a little thrown off at this bit yeah. when they decide to heal her wounds because yeah. the guy was like, oh, it takes weeks. And before they were saying, like when they were describing, well, the he forwards, says, it doesn't he say days? Yeah, it takes days. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. process takes days because they go back a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and the, and early on when you're with scientist lady, she's like, oh, it's some kind of radiation that reverses the entropy. Yeah, so it's like okay, so the process is you have to be like steeped in the radiation or some shit until right. you are inverted. But then it's just like, oh, it takes days. It's like okay, well, let's go through this thing and do it. And it's like oh. Wait, and, and that worked, and that just did. Oh, yeah. Okay. Also, right. they they have that moment where they're like, they talk about if you touch another version of yourself, annihilation occurs, and they use that because then John David Washington has the fight where he can't make contact, so he's in the suit. Mm-hmm. I thought Kenneth Branagh was gonna die because like he touches his other self. Mm. That's not what ends up happening. No. But that's just kind of one of those things they do where it's like. If you die in a dream, you know, you wake up. It's like, no, you're going to end up in limbo. And it's like, okay. Yeah. We, I get it. There's some, some additional stakes there. But yeah, overall, kind of the plot is just John David Washington's trying to get close to Kath Bronagh, who's the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, this this Russian man. Which And they, I love how long they hold off <laughs> on showing him. It's so great. Because you just get bits and pieces for like the first... I'd say 30 minutes. It's No, I think it's longer. I think, I think it's like so. close to an hour. Yeah, it could it could be. But I, again, the, the pacing was so quick that it was kind of hard to gauge where it was at. Yeah, um, I agree. But it feels like I'm I am willing to bet it's like 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Yeah, that's not true. And then, he sh- and then he shows up. But um, yeah, he's actually really scary. He's very intimidating. Yeah, like they, they definitely... And what's great is that he's so much shorter than everyone. But it's like, no, this guy's like, this guy's a cold, cold bastard, you know? Yeah. Well, and he, even when I'm feeling bad for him, it's like, yeah, but you're still going to kill yourself and end the world. Like, fuck you. Yeah, you're such a prick. <laughs> he's like, oh, if I can't have the world, no one can. It's like, that's awful. Yeah. You're terrible. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they give him a pretty brutal death, though, where he gets shot and then slid on sunscreen and then cracks his spine or sternum on the ship and then falls off. It's like, oh, God. Yeah. Because uh, they, they, they they make a point. I remember I made the joke to you early on where they're like, oh, an inverted bullet, the damage would be catastrophic. I'm like, but it's a PG-13 movie, so you're not going to see any blood. Yeah. <laughs> you're not gonna You're not going to see it, like, blow someone through and then reverse engineer the gore or anything like that. Well, see, I thought... I thought that was going to come back in uh, that first raid with John David Washington. Right. The first time he sees it. Because someone, like the person who's going to kill him, gets killed with an inverted bullet. So I was yeah. like, oh, the second time around, when we follow the person who who is going normal, then we're going to... And it's like, no, we're not even going to show that scene again. Yeah. It's like, okay. All right. And again, I feel like with Tenet, it, it, it works better than Interstellar for me because... Oh, yeah. Interstellar, uh, Tenet does some of the same things where it sets stuff up where it's very obvious that, oh, that's someone from the future. Oh, yeah. Like, it's it's, it's very obvious. Whereas Interstellar, like, it was immediately, I knew the whole plot from the first scene. Yeah. And the problem with Interstellar is that it's very, like, it's it's sappy. Yeah, it's very like sappy. Like, Interstellar is, like, the sappiest of Nolan's movies. And again, like, that can work sometimes. It's just that... In the context of that film, which it just doesn't like, I have to I have to be in a very specific mood to watch Interstellar, yeah. and even when I'm in that mood, I'm kind of just like, this is just eating like a ton of cotton candy. Well, because well, like another well, another problem with that that I don't feel is antenna is that Interstellar, because the future is trying to help us, I know the heroes are going to win because the future has to happen. Yeah. So if they exist, they have to save us. Yeah. Whereas in antenna, it's like. Well, the future's trying to kill us, but because they don't even know if it's going to work the way they do, and nobody really does, there's still tension because it's like, well, maybe something's going to happen that's going to be bad for our characters. See... You know, maybe someone will get caught in a pair. Maybe Robert Pattinson has to sacrifice himself. Yeah. Because, I mean, halfway through the movie, I'm like, is he going to die? Is he going to, like, sacrifice himself to save John David Washington? Yeah. But... See, so I they I know they explain this, but yeah. 
why doesn't the future want to just reverse it so that their backwardsness is the forward instead of just ending everything? Because even Kenneth Branagh is well, like, well, oh, they yeah. went too far and it was the end, so they had to go back. And it's like, oh, and they chose you to kill yourself but, and just end. Uh, again, everything. why it doesn't make sense to me is that I was willing to go with Kenneth Branagh happened to be the guy who would find what they had buried. Yeah. Okay. That's why he's the agent of the future. Why don't anybody from the future, like, just go back? Yeah. Because it's they never say there's a limit to how far back you can go, and you can transport objects, so they, theoretically, yeah. I don't get why the future people aren't... Like, if these rich elite people are like, oh, we have to destroy the past or something, it's like, okay, but you can reverse your stuff so you could technically just reverse the entropy of your planet until it was fine, but I guess because of the way inversion works no we have to do this weird plan yeah. and because I'm relying on motivations of people I never see it's like well why don't any of them come back to save themselves like I feel like that's what they should have done with Robert Pattinson yeah like Robert Pattinson should have been the guy who went rogue and was like no their plan was monstrous and I yeah. came back to like well that's why it's weird when um Aaron Taylor Johnson is around because he's just like yeah oh it's a it's a it's a temporal pincer movement so we're coming from the future and stopping and it's like what what did you yeah. what who are these people what i the, so these are the these are the good guys from the future yeah but where are the bad guys from the future but but, the, but then you find out no they're just from the near future they're from yeah they're yes. from like a couple of days in the yes future, and it's like oh well no i thought it was luck because they they because john david washington was basically orchestrating the entire thing from the future yeah and i assume well, yeah, that yeah, too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The way Robert Pattinson talks about him, like, you recruited me, I figured it was, like, a few years. Yeah. But, but I just... Yeah. But it's just... I, I, I don't... It's oh, hard it's to weird. say because... Yeah. I, I don't get why it takes days for something to happen when they can just get into the turntables and then... I don't leave. know. I, I, I'd have to... I'd have to rewatch. Again, this movie is focused on let's do cool time shit mm -hmm. and tell a... You know, pretty uh, pretty compelling story about nihilism and, you know, yeah. what do you believe about reality and, yeah. you know. And again, in a way that I, I, I like this more than Interstellar. Oh, yeah. Um, even though they're both beautifully crafted. But, yeah, and so I would say, like, overall, not like a huge huge emotional there there was moments there was definitely moments and i feel like uh, kenneth Branagh and his wife were the kind of the emotional center point of the whole film yeah i feel like i should have cared more in the end that she was reunited with her kid but i kind of didn't all that much i don't know why <sighs> it, it's because the kid's not a character yeah it's it's that's true in inception it works yeah I, I'd have to like think about why, but in this movie, it was like the kid's a plot device. It's it's entirely just a motivation thing. Well, and the, and that's kind of that's kind of the things that makes this movie difficult to get through is that it has arguably even more crazy, weird rules and mechanics than Inception. Oh, and way it, more. And it doesn't have the benefit of being in a dream, so they need to have yeah quote-unquote real-world explanations for why it works. They, there's a couple moments like, oh, the uh, explosion that froze you must have, like, given you, like, the like broke through the in inversion or whatever. It's like, okay, whatever. He's alive. Yeah, it's, it's, the, 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 again, like, the editing sometimes comes across like, yeah, it's great for the pacing, but sometimes it comes across as, and that scene's over, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it was ju just for the set piece. You have, like, oh, shit, Kenneth Branagh set the set the car on fire, it's gonna explode, and then it just cuts to black, and then he wakes up, and it's like, oh, yeah. you got pneumonia from the explosion. It's like, oh, I guess they say it. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, no, oh. it, 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 it's, it, again, like, yeah, I feel like, um, that's the thing where I do think that the whole arc between Kenneth Branagh and his wife, it's well written enough to where Nolan wisely has an emotional climax going at the same time as the action climax. Yeah. And what works is that the film's not just noise and action because you have that stuff going on with them on the yacht. And that's actually kind of like tension filled and emotional. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of like, I, again, I'd have to rewatch it, but I, I would say like it works very well. Like it, it fits the structure. It's, it's a good, uh, 
it's a good way to structure that kind of a climax yeah but again as far as like most a lot of other nolan's films it's not nearly as um emotionally satisfying and i think when you get because the ending of this movie is so weird it's very because it, it feels like a sequel bait it kind of does where it's like oh man john david washington he's the new light yagami yeah. he's, he's the new one masterminding time and he's gonna fight the future in a time war oh and he and he killed the arms dealer and it's like oh, he's watching out for her he's the guardian angel and it's like and then he had that bit where aaron taylor john's like oh if i find you i'll kill you and then him and robert pattinson kind of like oh this is the beginning and end of our friendship and then they part ways and it's like this is a, a this is an ending like this this is this is the you yeah. know a, a succinct ending but it also feels like oh man that that great scene at the end where he totally time outwitted them yeah so it it, it is very interesting i really enjoyed it mm -hmm. and i want to watch it again but i kind of feel like tenet was exactly what i expected it to be yeah I would say so. Where, okay, well, sorry, I'll go back. It was way more mind fucky than I thought it would be. That's that's true. Like I, I assumed it would be, but this was like way more. Like it had way more rules that than I expected. Yeah, I think it's. I think um, it's just because we knew the idea of so much of it, but just on paper and just yeah, it's entirely just the execution that makes you go. Wait, it, oh, it does is accomplishing what I think it's going to, just in a really yeah. weird way. Yeah. And 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 yeah, overall, I'd say it's it's uh it's definitely not one of Nolan's best films. But again, like the guy is like at the top of his craft. I would argue that Interstellar is the worst thing he's made to a bad movie. I mean, I mean, Following, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'd have to rewatch Following. I'd have to rewatch Following, but I but again, that was his first film. You know, oh okay, sorry. Now I'm thinking about Dark Knight Rises because. Uh, Dark Knight Rises, as you and I watch them more, we go, yeah, that third act is really not that good. It really just comes apart. Because I, I, I love, I love the beginning of the Dark Knight Rises when it leads, and then it's like as soon as he gets put in the prison, then like once he gets out of the prison, it just falls apart. Yeah, absolutely. I like, need to, I need to look at his filmography and see. Yeah, let's let's let's, let's let's look at that because I'd say. <sighs> Cause, Cause, I think, I think Dunkirk works a bit, a bit better than this in terms of. Cause Dunkirk is very light on character. Cause mm -hmm. it's mostly about like a feeling and a theme. Yeah, exactly. And it's about like putting you in like the shoes of the soldiers who were, you know, there at Dunkirk. Yeah. And so, and it's much shorter. It's like an hour and a half. Yeah. So I would say Dunkirk. You know, it's it's a little bit. This has a bit more character, but it's like way longer and also is like way more complex so i'd put dunkirk over this yeah um, i'd say yeah i'd say they're th both these movies are kind of towards the middle of his uh yeah like i'd say they're both just a little under the prestige around that mm. area um yeah, I again, I'd have to rewatch this uh, several times to find out where I'd put it in comparison to Dark Knight Rises. Because mm -hmm. Dark Knight Rises does have a lot of good, and it is like the end of a trilogy, and so it has that little boost. But um, yeah, you know. but he doesn't kill him, so <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't kill him, and Bane gets killed by off-screen bat pod. Which is is a fucking sin. That's like that's like if, that's like if Darth Vader got zapped by Boba Fett and then he just flew mm. off to help the rebellion. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, you're you're cool, but you didn't earn that shit. Uh, yeah, I, I, my favorite Nolan film is tough to pick because it's like Dark Knight and Inception are probably ah, oh, but it Memento so. Good. I know Moment <laughs> Memento is the wild card that yeah. shows up and is like, oh shit, you're really good. Yeah, because Memento is such a basic idea but it works so well it works it works very um well. and and it kind of set the stage well i guess following was out of order too but uh, so so would you say would you say the opening scene of uh of memento they were inverted yeah <laughs> it, it's almost like this is the payoff of like of of, of that one 20 of, years uh, yeah because because like it's that one bit in in memento where the bullet flies back into the gun and yeah. he catches the gun when it when it's dropped yeah i feel like this is the payoff of like that germ of a day where he was like what if i did a movie where that was all the action scenes yeah well, I mean, like in the back, in the in the in the recess of his mind, this built for twenty years, and then this is the payoff to that. Well, because I remember, um, 
than when we were like dead set on this being a sequel to Inception. Yeah, because I really thought it was because when Inception was coming out, he was like. I've been working on this idea for like yeah. 10 years. And then when this yeah. was coming out, he's like, I've been working on this idea for like 20 years. And it's like, well, it's 10 years after Inception. <laughs> so you were working on these ideas at the same time. <laughs> and we were like, yeah. and when it was really early on, we were like, we don't know Robert Pattinson's yeah, name. Maybe, what if maybe he's, he's, he's Cobb's son. He's Cobb's son from Inception. <laughs> I, I, yeah, because I watched this video where this person was like, well, if you look at the trailers for Tenet, um, Nothing in there is visually more impressive than the trailer for Inception. So theoretically, maybe it costs so much because he's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it and he's got uh, Joseph Gordon-Levin in it. I'm like, I can see that. I can see Nolan doing that, but I don't feel like that's how he does mind fucks. No. He doesn't do like, um, oh, I didn't tell you that this... I guess in Interstellar he had Matt Damon. Yeah. He had that. I Yeah. I think that was another thing the person used where they were like, this is the evidence. Matt Damon was a, was a real big surprise in Interstellar for a lot of audience members. And I'm like, okay, like maybe this is... <laughs> but then I, I was kind of like, maybe this is like a very soft, like in the same universe as Inception. And I guess nothing contradicts, but... I There's just no reason for the There's no reason to think to, it, yeah. That would be the sequel, like, though. Like, Mumbai is the only place that... <laughs> yeah. And I was like, maybe they're going to mention Kobol Engineering. No. 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 Like, if they had gone, like, oh, this, the, the the Oppenheimer, the female Oppenheimer who made Inversion, she worked for Kobold Engineering. I'd be like, oh! <laughs> but no, that's not what happened. No. Um, that's that, Well, that'll be Tenet 2. They have to... Where they have to invert back to a certain time and then do extraction on someone. <laughs> and then they have to invert within the extraction. <laughs> <laughs> because since it's in the dream and the person knows about inversion, it's like, no, but this could happen in the real world, so we can do it in the dream. Yep. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, this is so dumb. But also would be very awesome. <laughs> you have, they're, um, they're in the middle of an inverted fight, and then the person's just like, wait, it's a dream, I can change the rules, and they just break out an inversion. It's like, Fuck! That would just become an anime fight at that point. Pretty much. Like, oh, you can reverse time? I undid that. Yeah, you just mix the uh, Joseph Gordon-Levin fight with the John David Washington fight. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Tenet, there's so much more to talk about, but it it almost kind of... It's almost something you kind of got to watch for yourself, and then... And then, yeah, it's going to have to be something I break apart over time. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely agree. Yeah, very interesting. Exactly what I expected, but still uh, surprised me with how trippy it was. I, I I can't imagine what this would be like if you're blazed out of your mind. That, w- that would almost be overwhelming. Yeah, I think so. That would almost be, like, like headache-inducing, I feel. I'm trying to think of the trippiest thing that I've seen while, while high. Shazam! I mean, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, The Lighthouse. <laughs> the but Lighthouse, that, But yeah. that's, a, that's a different kind of trippy, but... I'd say it's... Yeah. I'd say it's of a similar scale. Uh, <laughs> In terms of how deep it goes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like how... The, the same amount of... Well, no, I'd say I, Lighthouse is more overt about the amount of eldritch horror is behind the surface, but... This is a subtle eldritch horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and it was one one other thing is that in the opening where they have the c- conductor go up, I was like, oh, it's Hans Zimmer. And I don't think he got shot, but I would love it if like he got shot and I was like, ah, that's for doing Dune instead of this movie. And it's like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> and it's like, I got Ludwig Gorgensen to do it. <laughs> I know. I mean, I made the joke when he got shot. I was like, ah, oh, now we gotta do it with Ludwig Gorgensen. <laughs> well, because I feel like Ludwig Gorgensen is like the is the is a similar joke to Digimon Hansu. Or it's yeah, like, I know I'm not saying your last name right, I, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like I like the score. It was it was definitely Zimmer esque, but I did like the kind of repeated motifs of the yeah. It was it was good. Yeah, there's I feel like I feel like there's two kinds of i mean not to not to discount the amount of effort going into chris nolan scores but i feel mm. like it kind of, they generally kind of have two modes where it's like and then <laughs> they have that and then uh occasional uh soft piano occasional like uh, an inception need, need as more. that no. need more yeah what would you say was the best scene of oh dang of the film. there's like like we're talking like oh, set wait, pieces we'll, right we'll, we'll do the the yeah you know which, whichever one yeah. you're most just like that's awesome um oh man uh because i think in terms of how uncomfortable i felt the uh the backwards fight scene 
the first time around was yeah. absolutely horrifying. I'd say uh, I liked that a lot, and then I also I did like the car chase though. That that had that was pretty intense for a car just coming in reverse at them. I would really I would really love to reverse all of the scenes that have inversion in them. Just, uh, <laughs> it would just be the other thing that's reversed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I and well, did I tell you that um, they released the score and then they released the album reversed? And they just called it inverted, and it was like, oh boy, yeah. that's awesome. And it still works; like the songs work backwards. Oh, it's like, yeah. oh very nice. But yeah, I would agree with that. I also think that that scene with the Kenneth Branagh behind the barrier. Oh and no, you're right. His progress. Th- that that one was like, yeah. Again, it's it, what I said earlier, where it's this weird thing where the plot is not at all scary or no. or 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 meant to be like unsettling, but the execution makes it very unsettling. I, like like it's this thing where it's like, yeah, this is not how reality needs to, is, is supposed to happen. Like like those bits where they just like catch a glimpse, and you see like there was one part where I thought there was like three Kenneth Branaghs, but there was just two, and yeah. I was like, oh fuck. Yeah. Oh shit! And I was like, "Why is there three kind of ah?" Oh. I think so. it's. I think the thing that makes it really terrifying is you watch you watch the first scene where it's John David Washington's perspective of their conversation, and it's really off. Like the responses yeah. aren't quite in time, and like yeah. it's very hard to follow what is being said. And then you get to the part where it's uh, Kenneth Branagh's perspective of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And taken out of context, it still is often weird. Like, you need both halves to fully understand what's going on. Again, I I need subtitles. I need subtitles. Because there was at least two lines in there that just got lost even both times I watched it. Oh, yeah, same. Oh, I was going to bring bring it up. I think one of the things that would have made the Kenneth Branagh and his wife's storyline a bit more impactful is if they had like some flashbacks to when things were okay kind of kind of like with Cobb and, and Mal you know get, yeah um because the, they kind of just go I ah, we're estranged and it's like oh. it, it's it's because like there's this point where they like you see the parts where they're trying to make you empathize with him yeah. but then it's like yeah but he's just like a nihilistic piece of shit so let's kill him yeah and I'm like well you could have made it like a little bit more tragic like uh, there's enough there for Kenneth Branagh to be made. I mean, yeah, he beats his wife, but like, come on, it's not like it's not like there's never been someone worthy of empathy who beat beat their wife. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. Like you could have put a little bit more in there, like he was driven to this point, or yeah, yeah. you could you could even make it like uh, she found out what he was doing and drifted away from him and saw other guys and he that made him like full of rage and so it's like well you know he did bad things and he responded poorly but you feel bad for him yeah but they kind of like held back on it a little bit they they did they did not they 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 put enough there to make him feel like more than a two-dimensional villain but not enough yeah. for him to do to be anything but a two-dimensional villain it's yeah it was again again like structurally like th- this film uh and it's kind of a thing that I know people complain about in Nolan. Like, this film definitely feels like it is constructed, like, I won't say perfectly, but it is structured very, like, mathematically. Yeah. It's like, hey, like, this is just the amount you need to, like, kind of feel bad for Kenneth Branagh, and this is the amount you need for her to be, like, have an arc to overcome in. John David Washington, like, it's just enough for him to not be, like, a one-dimensional protagonist, like... Yeah. And they call him the protagonist several times, which I think is uh, the dumbest thing Nolan's ever wrote. I was gonna... I was gonna say, when we when we went through the best, that's... That's the worst Easily part. the worst, because there's the f- one scene where he's starting to figure things out, and he's like, oh, I'm the protagonist, I'm like, stop, kill yourself. Well, did you notice when he said there were two antagonists? Yeah. And I was like, oof! Yeah. Yeah, the, the one protagonist thing... I could have gone with and been like, okay, I don't like it, but I don't like it. it it's fine, but the but fact if, that they brought it back, like, oh man, like yeah. that's that's who he is. It's like, boo. Yeah, no, that's like a that's like a trim that while writing the first draft. Like, yeah, that's that, that, that's a fir- that's a first draft mistake yeah. there. Because uh, all, all you got to do, all you got to. I've been fine with just oh, I'm Mr. Smith. Yeah, or you just know? don't give him because they go. It, it's like over an hour into the movie i'd say before he says i'm the protagonist so at that point yeah. you're just used to not knowing his name yes and it's fine yeah um, it, it was a very bizarre choice i mm, 
and you label him the the protagonist in in the in the credits. So it's fun. it's not like you call because there's other movies that do that. Like uh, there was the it's a weird random thing, but there was the film Antichrist with with Willem Dafoe, and he was just called Man. And then the other actress was called Woman. Yeah. And, like, independent films and other types of films do that all the time. Sure. It just was very baffling. It's because it's so... It's such stilted dialogue. No one would ever, like... No. That's that's strictly... No, it's not the type of story this is. No. It's not a story that's examining stories. It's a story that's examining realities. Yeah. You're deciding not to give him a name because you're Chris Nolan and you think it's fun. You did the same thing in The Following, only you didn't point it out. Yeah, in The Following, they never say his name. They don't say, like, oh... I'm the man with no name. Yeah. It's not like he calls himself that at some point. It's like, fuck you. Yeah. No, that's, that's so funny. it, it, yeah, that would be the thing that I would a hundred percent change about this movie. Cut that. Just yeah. Take it out. It, it works fine. If you never hear that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, never need to hear it again. That was important to get that in there. Cause uh, I know some people like mentioned, Oh, he's just called the protagonist, but I didn't realize that, it, that he, he was no, actually he like multiple times referred to, referred to such. like, that's bad. That's, that's, um, cool. That was Tenet. Very, uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Again, like... Never a waste of time to watch a Nolan film. No. You always get no. something out of it. You always get something, then I'll watch whatever he does next, the crazy bastard. I just hope this, like... They, they gotta re-release this next year, right? Like, there's no way this is gonna make it. It's $200 million. They'll just keep it in theaters this whole time. They're just gonna keep it till next October. Yeah. It'll be the longest... It'll be like Titanic, where they kept it in theaters for like 11 months or something. Yeah. Do that, but it's actually like earned. You know. <laughs> Stay tuned for when we review Titanic. <laughs> Billy Zane's in it. I, oh, I know. I've seen the movie. I, I know. Multiple I, times. Just pointing that out, you know? Yeah. He's he's terrible, but oh, he's he's ass. <laughs> I think that's when he stopped giving a shit about his career cuz James Cameron just told him, "You're the snobby British rich guy." And he was like, "I want to care about my career." He's like, "No." And then afterwards he's like, "I'll do Scorpion King 3." We couldn't we couldn't have gotten uh we couldn't have gotten that great Wheel of Time pilot with mm-hmm. him in it, if not for Titanic. So the irony is that post Titanic, I think the best acting Billy Zane did was in the first Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Because he's legitimately fucking amazing in that game. And it's like, hmm. Yeah. You know? Anyway. (laughs) Uh, So, that was Tenet. If you have an idea for something else you want us to review, because we're not going to have a lot of things to see in theaters that we really want to watch. If you want us to review New Mutants, we will. But I can't promise we'll be entirely sober. I can almost, I can almost definitely promise that we will not be. So I like how we were hoping that New Mutants is going to be good, and then we saw Dark Phoenix, and we're like, no, yeah, there's no, no, no hope. It's not happening. No hope whatsoever. I'm All right, looking, I'm looking up Billy Zane filmography. This postscript, the Billy Zane Chronicles. Why wasn't he in Tenet? He should have been the guy to give him the Tenet and the hand sign. <laughs> I mean, he's British. It would have worked just as well. You know, they they auditioned him, but he was drunk at the audition. Uh, so it's fucked his chance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. Sorry, Billy Zane. They got the chick from Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah, you know, and she's like she's like six foot something. She's she's a tall. She's lady. very she's, tall. She's a tall lady. Yeah. yeah, but that just goes to show Billy Zane. If like this lady was in Cloverfield Paradox and then she got to work in a Nolan movie, like you, you have hope. I love how the only video in Cloverfield Paradox we've done is like our reaction where we were like coming up with all these theories and we're very excited. And then like literally like two months after, I'm like, that movie was bad, Just wasn't it? Contempt and I have and nothing but I have nothing but disappointment and contempt for the Cloverfield Paradox. Like it looks great. That's about all I can say. It's it's. The preceding two films are, are are worth... You could compare the worst scene in any of the first two movies and the best scene of Cloverfield Paradox doesn't even compare. It's like it's like going Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark of the Moon. And, uh, you know. <laughs> it's all in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us on our discussion of Tenet. Have a wonderful day and uh, catch y'all on the flip side.